Okay, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for being here this afternoon uh, for our introduction of the 2025 preliminary Lackawanna County budget. Commissioner McGloin and I have said since taking office in January that the county faces serious financial and operational challenges and that we would be honest, transparent, and straightforward in addressing them. The budget that we're introducing today does so. We know that its most prominent feature and the resulting headline is that it includes a property tax increase of more than 32%. That is the largest general fund increase or increase to fund operations since 2012, when the rate increased by 37.5%. The median assessed value for a residential property in Lackawanna County is $11,000. With the millage increase that we're proposing for the 2025 budget, that property's county tax bill will rise from $744.37 to $989.78, a difference of $245.41, or if you're looking at it monthly, $20.43. In the interest of maintaining that candor that I just spoke about, this is not a case where we have introduced a large tax increase number only to reduce it using gimmicks and one-time revenue sources before final passage. The deficit identified in this budget is more than $28 million. But when we began the formal budget process a few months ago, it was projected at more than $35 million. We already have achieved substantial savings that we'll identify, which are detailed further in the budget message and in the budget highlights compiled by our, compiled by our Chief Financial Officer, Dave Bolzoni, which are attached to the budgets that you all received. So while the 2024 budget year continues and some adjustments are likely before final passage, there is not likely to be any major change in the bottom line. To understand why this increase is necessary, it's instructive to look at how we got to this point. If the story of how we got here can be told in a single graph, this is it behind me. The general fund real estate tax revenue since 2012 went up by 27%. Our expended county expenditures since 2012 have gone up by 79%. And as this graph compiled by our consultant PFM shows, revenue has not grown with expenses. And that is why we are standing here this afternoon in the position that we're in. It's important to note that the first major increase was back in 2012. From 2013 to 2019, taxes were not increased at all. The 2020 budget increase was mostly for uh, the pension, to fund the pension. And the 2024 increase was just not nearly enough. And we believe that it was, uh, that was done just to create the perception that the commissioners were doing something about the problem, but clearly uh, they didn't go far enough. Those revenues are flat because successive administrations refused to raise taxes to keep up with cost. They kept spending, but didn't have the money to pay the bills. Simply put, they played politics, worrying only about getting reelected instead of actually running the county. Let's also not forget the embarrassing political infighting and dysfunction within county government that went on for years that certainly did not help. The previous commissioners did all this despite repeated warnings from their own chief financial officers that their course was unsustainable. Instead of listening to sound financial advice, they decided to play politics, a complete dereliction of duty. They funded budgets by depleting county reserves and falsely treating the county fund balance as current year revenue and more. Those one-time cash infusions funded the budgets in individual years, but did nothing, nothing to address the underlying revenue shortfalls. Those shortfalls have accumulated into the $28 million plus systemic deficit that we have inherited and identified and finally have addressed in this budget. Those poor decisions, along with failing to adequately fund the pension system, also were cited by the credit rating agency Standard & Poor's when it downgraded the county's credit rating to triple B with a negative outlook. Failure to correct those procedures and decisions would only make it more expensive for Lackawanna County to do business. 
Those irresponsible budgeting decisions of the past are the very definition of kicking the can down the road. Inevitably, just as the CFOs repeatedly warned, that road has turned out to be a dead end. I'm proud to say this afternoon that with this budget, Commissioner McGoin and I are charting a new course for Lackawanna County. Today is the preliminary budget presentation, but we have been working diligently since taking office in January to identify and begin to unravel the systemic financial, organizational, and procedural factors that are the root of the problem. We have acted and will continue to do so, but it's clear that reform will take some time. Some critics suggest that we have spent irresponsibly and have promoted the fiction that we can cut our way out of this problem. But the chief county expense is the personnel cost inherent in providing crucial public services, criminal justice, emergency services, and a wide array of key social services for the county's most vulnerable residents. As this graphic demonstrates, more than two thirds of county personnel costs fall under those crucial mandated classifications. Yet we carefully examined the budget and discovered that there were 90 full-time funded and part-time positions that were vacant. In some cases, they have been vacant for a significant period of time. This budget eliminates those 90 positions, about 8% of total budgeted positions, producing a savings of $2.6 million. Beyond those savings, that constitutes a major governance reform. Going forward, if a position is not filled and specifically accounted for in the budget, it does not exist. That means that departments must justify every new hire to the salary board, and that means far tighter budgetary control in terms of money and operations. Using an analysis by our consultant, PFM, we also include, included other personnel measures in this budget. First, nearly 350 non-union personnel mostly in administrative and management positions, will not receive a wage increase in 2025. In recent years, employees in those positions have received automatic 2.5% increases. That wage freeze will save about $400,000. PFM has pointed out that the county's healthcare costs have accelerated much faster than wages, and that the county offers some of the richest and most expensive health care uh, benefits among counties and other local governments in Pennsylvania. In 2025, those costs are projected to rise by 9% or $2.8 million. To mitigate those costs, non-union employees will begin to pay new or increased deductibles and co-pays in 2025. We won't be able to calculate those savings until the end of the impending open enrollment period for health care benefits, but they will be significant. Meanwhile, negotiations for a new contract are underway with the Service Employees International Union, or SEIU, and others will take place over the next three years. It's also important to point out that we have cut overtime in the Sheriff's Department and prison by $1,250,000. We believe these savings can be realized through more effective scheduling moving forward. Recognizing in January that the 2024 budget that we inherited included 13 months of expenses, but only 12 months of revenue, and that it was a symptom of an underlying systemic deficit, we immediately applied and were accepted into the, the state strategic management program. We hired PFM, who are financial experts, which helped us to navigate 2024 and to devise a strategy to achieve solvency and sustainability for the long term, and that work continues. We also determined early on that we would not carry over unpaid bills into 2025, and we are not doing so. This not only constitutes honest budgeting, but ensures that companies and vendors that do business with the county are paid on time. In May, after months of due diligence, we disbanded the county health department rather than seeking full state certification for it, because it had been established under a false financial premise. We determined that most of the costs would fall to county taxpayers rather than the state government and concluded that it was unsustainable. That decision will save county taxpayers more than $3 million a year, and it made available some highly qualified personnel who now are helping to revive the struggling office of youth and family services. 
We also took steps to improve budgeting and financial performance for the long term. We approved a switch to priority-based budgeting, which will produce a yearly examination of each department's operations and plans and produce budgets based on real-time priorities and needs rather than assumptions based on past practice. Also, we contracted for a cash vest program, which will seek to create a significant new source of reliable revenue by increasing the amount of revenue the county generates from its cash flow. Other reforms are included in the 2025 budget itself. In recent years, the county also failed to fully fund its pension system, sometimes making no contribution at all. Well, while underfunding its operating budget um, and its credit rating downgrade this year, S&P cited both practices and, uh, as major contributing factors. The 2025 budget makes the first in a series of corrective steps. It nearly doubles the contribution from $4.1 million to $7.9 million. The beginning of a plan to incrementally increase contributions to meet the actuarial requirements for funding. We also want to emphasize that as we continue to implement reforms to improve the county's finance and operations, we will continue to invest in programs and projects that make Lackawanna County a great place to live, to work, and to raise a family. For example, we are on schedule to complete the construction of the North Pocono Trail between Elmhurst and Dunmore by next summer. Preliminary work will continue to develop a riverfront park near the county's Electric City Trolley Museum and the Steamtown National Historic Site, restoring a badly contaminated site and providing a great amenity for the growing downtown neighborhood. Our Department of Economic uh, Development and Planning will continue to nurture new and expanding businesses, and we are committed to continuing our partnership with the Greater Scranton Chamber of Commerce to foster technology-based entrepreneurship. And using dedicated funding, the county will continue its commitment to arts and culture, including a world-class mural project, the winter market at Courthouse Square, and an array of other projects that foster the arts and enhance our quality of life. In closing, no one takes joy in a significant tax increase, but we hope that the taxpayers of Lackawanna County can take some satisfaction knowing that it is in the context of much broader reform and that honest budgeting, transparency, and optimism about the future are not mutually exclusive ideas. And with that, uh, we'll take questions from the press. And I believe Dave will as well. So Dave's available as well for any questions. Yeah. Joe? Gentlemen, uh, you mentioned 90 funded but vacant positions that were being eliminated, um, some of which have been vacant for some time. How is that money being spent previously? It was budgeted within the department, but it just wasn't it wasn't being spent since the positions weren't being filled. And uh, when PFM gave their cash flow analysis update, they cited that as a reason that our personnel costs uh, were coming under budget because there's a whole number of positions that, for whatever reason, were just not being filled. Some of those positions have been vacant for a significant period of time. Other position other positions have just become vacant uh, within the last few months. Where, where was that, if, if, was there an excess, and how was that being used? But you're budgeting for those dollars to begin with. Oh, I and see. And that's the problem. So you're budgeting for, you're budgeting dollars for positions that are vacant, which really doesn't make a lot of sense, because that's an allocation of dollars within a budget for positions that likely are not going to be filled. This is really more of a best practice. So if you have positions that you're anticipating are going to be filled within that budget year, you want to incorporate them in the budget. But if you have a number of positions within a certain department and those positions are not going to be filled, uh, what the commissioners are doing is really a best practice for the county government. You don't want to have to allocate dollars to those positions. It just doesn't make any sense from the budget year. Of course, that may be true. But you're, but you're you're claiming $2.6 million in savings from eliminating those 90 positions, and you weren't spending that money. So how was that saving? Because they were vacant, so because you weren't spending. So you, you couldn't have spent. Dave? Well, it's just what I had indicated. From a budgetary perspective, you want to create savings on a current year basis by not allocating dollars in order to cover it. I mean, from what Board has said is, is correct to some extent. 
um, if those dollars are not being spent, then you're creating some savings within that budget. But it's not just the positions themselves. You know, keep in mind that there is also the health care commitment as well. So, you know, in this case, it really is a best practice not to fund those positions if, in fact, they're not going to be filled. Jeff. Uh, gentlemen, you guys also um, are reducing budgeted overtime in the sheriff's department and in, um, oh, forgive me, uh, the, at the prison uh, by a considerable amount, um, I think about $1.2 million reduction in budgeted overtime. Can you talk about any actual policy changes in terms of scheduling or staffing or anything that you guys hope to implement to actually achieve that reduction? So we already have, for the prison, we already have uh, hired a, a significant number of uh, additional personnel that we think next year will have an effect on lowering the overtime. Uh, with the, the sheriff is an independent elected official. We've talked with the sheriff at length. Um, obviously, PFM cited the sheriff's department as a department that I think needs to do a better job at scheduling. And we're hopeful that the sheriff will take their uh, recommendations into consideration and I think if you know they work on their scheduling that we can get the overtime down uh, significantly and and the bottom line is that they had the you know the sheriff is an independent elected official but he represents the ta all the taxpayers in Lackawanna County we can't spend that type of money on overtime so something has to something has to give and uh, one more from me um, you know the prevailing wisdom has always been that modest annual incremental tax increases help avoid a precipitous 33, 37, whatever number increase. When you've foregone those, I know the argument is you kind of left with no choice, but moving past next year, is the goal of the administration in subsequent years going to be to affect those modest increases on an annual basis as opposed to going years without a, a tax increase? Uh, I, I, I think it's... You know, I, I you know, I, I think everybody in those rooms today wishes they had a crystal ball. You know, Jeff, and obviously we're still in the process of putting forth that four to five year financial plan that we're talking about, and certainly going to take some time. Um, but let's not forget that we're in this position because of what has come before us. And I think you saw what you're referring to as a modest increase. You saw that a year ago. And Commissioner Gahan stated it perfectly, I think, earlier when he said that was done to essentially create the perception that we're doing what's right and clearly wasn't the case. The other thing I'll add to that is just like with people, the, your own household, you want to be honest about the way that you budget. And if you look at the way the county has been operating uh, because of decisions by past administrations, it's robbing Peter to pay Paul, using gimmicks, using one-time revenue sources. And, you know, maybe that makes people feel good in the public, but then we inherit a complete and absolute disaster, and we have no choice but to raise taxes over 30%. The same thing, and I don't, uh, Mr. Bolzoni will agree with me, the same thing happened at the city of Scranton. I, when I was on council, I even held up a chart, years of no tax increase. Then all of a sudden, new mayor comes in and has to jack it up double digits. I have five children. Commissioner McGloin has two children. We have household budgets. We do not want to put families in a position where they, with the sticker shock, where they can't budget for the increase. So we want to sum it all up. We want to be honest with people. Um, and I think this 2025 budget is a good first step in the right direction. You mentioned, uh, again, kicking the can down the road and um, went back about a decade or so what we've seen here in the county with increases. Is that the scope of time that we're really seeing this problem start, or is it something that's been preceded that by decades? Well, if you go back to the Cordero uh, and Munchak administration, they actually lowered taxes, which was extremely irresponsible. And of course, they ended up, both of them ended up in uh, prison. But you start 10 or so years ago where they're rating the fund balance. They're doing these one-time gimmicks, these one-time revenue sources, and they're standing up at a podium like this saying, we're not raising your taxes, woohoo!" And they're, they're not telling people the reality of the situation, which Commissioner McGloin and I are doing, and we're gonna continue to do that. But you could go back 10 or so years, you can go back farther than that. And it's not just uh, limited to county government, it's go back years mm -hmm. in city government, like I just cited before. This is the game. You raise taxes in your first year, 
you don't raise them at all, you get, hope, you get reelected, cross your fingers, and then you raise them in your first year. All we want to do is tell the truth and be honest with people. That's why we're instituting all of these reforms. That's why back in January, when we got in office, we applied to the uh, Strategic Management Planning Program, and that's why we have PFM now, uh, who is our financial advisors and our financial consultants who actually know what they're doing. And I think to really answer your question as well, and we touched on it earlier from 2012 to 23, and Dec Dave, correct me if my numbers are wrong, but I don't believe they are, it was 79% of expenses have gone up from 12 to 23, and within that is 2016 to 2023 where expenses have gone up 65%. So you're really looking, I think, Dave, at that last bulk of those eight years there um, to where things really were mismanaged um, and just simply out of control to the point where July would come around and you know, commissioners would just stop paying bills and then balance their budget, carry that over into the new year. And it was just this dark cycle um, in which how they operate it and from our understanding, completely fine with conducting county government that way. And I said something months ago and still holds true today. This is what happens when you have people prior not accepting the fact that you have a fiduciary responsibility in this role to do what's right. And they simply didn't do that. And it's now fallen onto us. And at the end of the day, we're simply trying to fix the problem for the working working families and, and, and 200, roughly 220,000 residents here in Lackawanna County. What's a long-term long solution now? It's like you're, you noted that the revenues, of the property tax revenues, and they're basically your only source of income have been flat for years now. Uh, is there any hope that that changes? Uh, and why would it? Well, the long-term solution is to make county government more efficient. And that is why we went back in January and entered into the strategic management planning program, hired PFM, and they're currently continuing to conduct a full-scale analysis of every department, every row office to make sure that they're running as efficiently as possible. So. You know, we're standing up here today, we're being honest that we can't cut, completely cut our way out of this because if you look at county government in the slide that uh, we showed before, most of the personnel, most of the departments are mandated for crucial services that counties must provide. So we have to find ways in order to become more efficient. And we think we've taken some steps already uh, in order to do that. You know, one of the things that uh, we did early on was uh, enter into the Cash Fest program. Um, how do we move our money around between banks? How can we get the best interest rate? Lycoming County, I think, for example, has uh, realized quite a few million dollars in, in one or two years from that. So we're not baking that into the budget because we're not quite sure you know, what that revenue will be, but we're hopeful that things like that, uh, working smarter and not harder, will help produce uh, revenue for the county. But I will say this, the way that county government is set up across the state of Pennsylvania, there's not a ton of tools in our toolbox. We just met the other day with the executive director of the County Commissioners Association of Pennsylvania. Every other county in Pennsylvania faces the same daunting task that we do. There, we don't have a ton of revenue sources that uh, to pick from, and that's just the reality of the situation. You guys mentioned a figure, $28 million structural deficit. Is that, just to be clear, is that the would-be structural deficit but for this tax increase and these other steps, or is that the structural deficit that remains after the tax increase? Uh, that, no, that's what we inherited, and we will have we have a balanced budget now that we're able to raise that revenue. So it effectively eliminates that $28 million. Correct. Correct. Uh, a lot of companies, when they run into a situation like this, they lay off employees. Are there any county employees getting into that? Uh, we have every option is on the table, mm -hmm. um, but we only because you said that you, this is the budget. This is pretty much the budget. That right. Well, we're still uh, doing our best along with PFM to analyze every department. Uh, so every option is on the table, but we're not announcing layoffs at this point. Anyone else from the media have any questions? Yeah, just one. Why yeah. is the commissioner Turvac up there with you? Well, well, two reasons. First of all, this is our budget. Uh, Commissioner McGloin and I, this is our administration. We are the majority commissioners. Commissioner Chermack was involved and invited to all the budget hearings that we had with each department. He is, was invited here today. We are still waiting for Commissioner Chermack and his team, who has met with our CFO, to provide their alternative budget to this. You know, Commissioner Chermack has stated on several occasions that he will not, under any circumstance, raise taxes. So what Commissioner McGloin and I have simply said to him is, 
that's fine. Show us how you do that. If you're not willing to raise taxes, which we know is the reality, show us how you show us how you get around that. And if he can do that, and all do with all due respect, we would love to see what the alternatives are. Uh, so in the past, I know that minority commissioners have presented their own budget. They presented their own budget message. We welcome that. I mean, if he has alternatives to what we are presenting, we would be more than happy to sit down and look at them and possibly incorporate them into our budget. But the reality of the situation is, you know, when you uh, oppose something without any alternative, it's hard to take you serious. So if you stand up here and say, like he has on several occasions, I refuse to raise taxes no matter what. All right, well, what else do you got? You know, we have a spending problem. Thanks for the analysis. What else do you got? So that's just the honest to God's truth. I mean, if Commissioner Chermak were standing up here with us today, I don't know what else he would say. That's why he's the minority commissioner. The minority commissioner plays an important role in county government as a check and balance to the majority commissioners. We're simply asking, where's your plan? And, and just to add on that, Boris, just really quick, um, I'm not going to mention you know anything that anybody else has done or has not done. But what I will tell you is that you know myself, Commissioner Gahan, you know Mary Joe, Dave, Dave Balzoni, Brian Jeffers, Tracy Hart, our, our our entire administration that work day in and day out to really do all we can to do what is right and put forth a well put together preliminary budget um, worked extremely hard to, to, to get to this point to where we're at today. Um, you know, so that's, that's really all I'll say on that moving forward. Anyone else, any other questions from the media? Well, I, look, no, and I, we ta actually talked about this this morning. Uh, we're not worried about re-election. First of all, if we were even to run, in th that's three and a half years away. And secondly, if you're governing because you're worried about re-election, that's how you end up standing up here announcing a 30 plus percent tax increase. And that is inherently the problem with Lackawanna County government at its core. We're worried about how to get to the next election. How do I get re-elected? How do I make people believe that everything's fine? We have a fund balance of X amount. Great, but it's so, everything is so misleading. So uh, we're not worried about re-election. We're worried about simply doing the right thing. And I, I, you know, respectfully, of course, Joe, I don't agree with that question or think it's fair in this situation, to be honest with you. Um, but I think what you have compared to what we had had at one point in time are individuals that want to do the job, that don't necessarily need to do the job. Mm -hmm. Following up on that, uh, is there any concern about potential hits to morale for going a pay hike for non-union employees, raising their health care contributions, understanding, of course, that those are the recommendations from your financial consultant? And well, we're hopeful that the employees of Lackawanna County understand the position that we're in. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're not taking away quality health care. We're simply saying we have to be in line with the rest of society, which pays for their health care. Uh, when we sat down with our health care consultant, she reported to us, along with our HR director, that we have the, one of the richest health care plans in the entire state. You saw the slides today. We can't afford it. If we were able to afford it, great, but we can't afford it. So um, I just hope that people realize that this is the position that we've been put in and we don't have any other way to go about doing it. You know, you can't, you can't provide things that you can't afford. Anyone else? Okay, thank you everyone, have a nice day.